Hello. I, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit more about education and mind in the Knowledge Age, Carl Brader's book, because uh, one of your readings this week is Chapter 1, and um, it's about our oldest unchallenged folk theory at last faces its day of reckoning. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about why he's, he wrote this, this book. Um, when we first started the uh, Knowledge Forum uh, project, uh, it was a, a program then called CECL running in uh, here on public school, just up the road from uh, Boise. And uh, it was running with grade five, six children. And it became apparent that this was a different sort of endeavor than we had taken on before, in that the students were asked to not only take on mastering content, but to go beyond that, to actually pull content together and, and strive towards actually putting new knowledge together, that um, they weren't being spoon-fed, it in fact was an outgrowth of, of constructivist learning. Um, at its extreme in, in many respects. And um, in doing that, it became evident that we weren't really talking about students uh, mastering a body of, of, of content, curriculum, knowledge. What we were doing was actually trying to get students to um, uh, understand that curriculum uh, material and pull it together in a way that had value added for them. So they were actually in the process of creating knowledge. Now, they may have created knowledge that was previously created by other scientists and things like that, but uh, from their perspective at that point in time, they were pulling it all together and creating the knowledge. So it's, it's the ultimate in terms of insight and uh, reflection and because of that it forced us to rethink what is knowledge and in that respect uh, Carl Breiter was also uh, reflecting on a new movement in that time in the 90s uh, which looked at neural processing of, of information and neural networks and looking at the fact that when the neural network ran, information wasn't encoded someplace in the, the network. It was a result of the network interacting. And that became a, a pretty strong metaphor for thinking how the mind could also um, produce and work with information um, without it actually being stored in the mind, that it was a result of the interaction. And in this case, we started to understand not only the result of the interaction within the neurons firing within a student's head, but in fact the interaction between students. And when they were working with their ideas and bouncing ideas off of each other, it was a result of that interaction, the communal interaction, that we started to see new knowledge getting, getting constructed. Once you start to put knowledge as a result of the interaction as something that's outside the, the head, um, not something that has been placed in there in the filing cabinet metaphor, that gets you thinking about an entirely new way to think about what education is, what, it, what, what we should be doing, and how deeply we should be thinking about new ways that schools should be, be acting and teachers should be, be acting. And his book, Carl's book, Education of Mind in the Knowledge Age, written in 2002, um, is uh, a complete response to that question. And when you finish reading all of that book, you get a much better understanding for why knowledge building is different than learning. Um, and many of the things that you'll be uh, struggling with. At this point, we want you to come up against those ideas 
if they're comfortable great if they aren't so comfortable that's not something that you should worry about a lot um, it's enough that you're at this point noting that they're uncomfortable and trying to get a hold of what it is that you really feel is bothering you about both those ideas and we'll talk more about that in class so this was just a chance to try and make sense of that and um, an opportunity to introduce a new epistemology that uh, if, if it really um, takes hold creates a whole new opportunity for technology in the school system okay enjoy